Absolutely, uh, deep learning has transformed computer vision completely uh, in the last uh, nine years. A big part of it is also just the awareness and the focus that industry has on AI. So I would like for, for at least once, go into some specific example of applications of, uh, if you like, end-to-end -end solutions. And I was thinking of the sector of computer vision. It's probably one of the AI sectors where we have seen the most transformational technologies with deep learning having a lot of impact. We've seen all what's happening in the uh, autonomous driving market. And those are the things that are fancy. Those are the things that get audience both on the television, on the, t on, on the YouTube, but there is an entire world in the industrial applications. And I'd like to maybe you telling us a little bit more about examples of applications in the really in the industrial compound of the new development in computer vision. Yeah, so, so computer vision is interesting. As you said, it, it's very intuitive. It captures people's imagination. It's not, I wouldn't say that it's where a lot of our focus is, uh, just because the nature of, of our, the clients that we work with, um, you know, it's a lot more around document processing and NLP, uh, around more, a lot more around uh, traditional data analytics and traditional data uh, processing and, and structured data, if you will. Where we do see computer vision coming to play uh, is in very sort of very specific use cases that, that tends to be relevant to, to the specific client. But that being said, uh, we've also seen applications more broadly in retail around uh, store management uh, and customer management. We've seen it in uh, more and more, we're seeing that now in, in industry around uh, maintenance. So rather than using expensive sensors, uh, you can use uh, much cheaper cameras to literally just take pictures of your uh, systems, whether it's uh, trains, whether it's uh, machines in an in, in, in industrial complex, to, to do maintenance, to do asset management, uh, and those kind of use cases. Why it's possible to implement those use cases today? Two things. So first of all, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, deep learning has transformed computer vision completely uh, in the last uh, nine years. That, I think that's just one aspect of things. So, so our, our algorithms are getting better. Uh, what we've done, for example, in maintenance, uh, we, we have uh, uh, a device, kind of like a train that runs along the tracks uh, and, and takes pictures of the ground and the tracks in front of it and literally identifies uh, defects in the rail that needs to be maintained. Another one uh, sits beside the track and takes pictures of the trains that are running by uh, of the wheels and identifies where wheels need to be uh, maintained and changed. Uh, we've seen uh, with the deployment of this, we, we've seen uh, a reduction of 85% in the efforts around maintenance, uh, while at the same time getting an uptime uh, of uh, more than 70% uh, increase. So spending less on, on actually maintaining and spending the right dollars in the right place. Certainly the algorithms that we use behind the scenes partially take advantage of, of deep learning uh, improvements that we've seen, but a big part of it is also just the awareness and the focus that industry has on AI. A lot of the stuff that we're doing, maybe not so much in computer vision, but yeah, more broadly in AI, uh, is stuff we could have done 10, 15, 20 years ago. CNNs have been around uh, since uh, the late 80s. LSTMs have been around since the 90s. A lot of this stuff is not new. We've had decent uh, entity extraction capabilities for a good 10 years now. Sure, they've been getting a lot better due to technology and algorithms uh, and, and more importantly, data. Uh, but in terms of getting all that into industry, it's really just a mindset. So uh, a lot of the problems that we're solving today could have been solved a lot sooner, but the focus and attention to this field of AI just wasn't there. Some of the economics benefits that you mentioned is basically reduction of cost in maintenance and also reduction of uptime, uh, downtime for, uh, for the trains and so on. How much of the driver for this project is actually the business objective? For successful projects, uh, the business alignment is 100%. When we don't have that, when we don't have a clear view of what the ROI is in the project, of what the technology is going to do, uh, more often than not, the project uh, stops or, or shuts down after an initial POC or initial demonstration where uh, what we call a science experiment. It, it's great that you can predict this thing about customer churn, but if I can't tie that directly to how I'm going to make money, 
uh, no, nobody's going to invest in it to, to flush it out more. So uh, when I mentioned before about the end-to-end -end journey, that's a lot of what work that we do through the strategy arm of Omnia is helping businesses figure out not just uh, how to set up uh, potentially their, their own teams to do data science, but which problems make more sense to tackle, uh, what that ROI is going to look like, and how you're going to go about doing it. So I would say for a successful project, they have to have that alignment from the business.